or various phenomenology. So in this video, we'll be looking into something called a potential divider. Now, this topic is basically a part of O-level physics and uh, students of AS level will also find this video useful uh, because this is also there in AS level physics. Obviously, it's a bit more advanced, especially in terms of the questions that appear on the paper. But anyway, now basically this chapter, uh, this this is basically a subtopic of the of a bigger topic, DC circuits. So, uh, and I'm making this video on the request of a friend of mine who wanted to understand potential dividers. So, obviously, I haven't uh, explained the remaining part of DC circuits or current electricity for that matter. Uh, so, therefore, it uh, it will be a bit difficult for me to do it very directly because it's you know just like jumping into the sea without learning to swim so i'll try my level best and i hope i can explain the concept to you so now uh, now watching this video uh, i hope that you guys have a prior understanding of voltage current uh, CD circuits and parallel circuits because without that knowledge without that preambulatory knowledge It's useless to watch this video Anyway So what is a potential divider? Let's take a look at the name first potential refers to voltage and Divider obviously refers to division or segregation or compartmentalization so a potential divider basically is something that divides the voltage anyway so what basically is the source of voltage in a particular circuit yes a battery so what will a potential divider do it will divide the voltage provided by the battery uh, according to some proportion between the components of a circuit so what kind of a circuit should we use as a potential divider the answer is a series circuit. What is the reason behind the use of a series circuit? Well, if you know about parallel and series circuits, we know that in a parallel circuit, the one that I have drawn here on the uh, on the left side of the uh, of the canvas, you will see that uh, every loop of the circuit has its own connection with the battery. And for this reason, what happens is that uh, uh i'm sorry i've arranged the voltmeter in a totally incorrect way so ignore that i'll remove the voltmeter remember voltmeter is arranged in parallel to the component across which you want to check the voltage so if i want to check the voltage across this resistor this is how the voltmeter should be placed and not the way i had placed it previously right so this is the correct way to place a voltmeter Anyway, so uh, in a series, in a parallel circuit, what happens is that uh, every loop of a parallel circuit has its own independent connection with the battery. For this reason, every loop has an equal voltage. And that voltage is same as the voltage of the battery. Let's say the uh, this battery is a six volt a six volt battery, so this loop will also be having six volts coming across it, and this loop will also be having six volts coming across it. Therefore, uh, because of the fact that a parallel circuit has uh, every limb of a parallel circuit has its own independent connection with the battery. A parallel circuit cannot function as a potential divider whereas let's come to series circuits now in series circuits what happens is that uh, current remains the same here in a parallel circuit what happens is that voltage in every limb in every loop is the same and current is divided between the loops and it's for this reason why a parallel circuit 
cannot function as a potential divider. Whereas the opposite happens in a series circuit. In a series circuit, current remains same throughout the circuit. remains same throughout the circuit. Why? Because there's just one loop throughout the circuit. However, the voltage coming from the battery is divided uh, among the components of a circuit. Voltage is divided between the components of the circuit. So what happens is that some voltage will be dissipated here and some voltage would be dissipated here. So if I attach a voltmeter here, I'll use a different color. If I attach a voltmeter here and I attach another voltmeter here, I'll have two sets of voltages the sum of which would give me the voltage of the battery. So now the thing is, what is the parameter, uh, what is the discriminating factor, what is the deciding factor that will tell us the ratio in which the voltages are divided between the components of, the of a series circuit? The answer is the resistance of these components. So the other thing that we now, now know is, that the division of voltage between the components is on the basis of the resistance of the different components of the different components. So this, this resistor would be having a resistance, let's say R1. And this resistor would be having a resistance, let's say R2. The other thing that we know is that the current throughout the circuit is the same, I. Now we have studied this formula. In current electricity, V is equal to IR. Therefore, we can apply this formula and find out the voltage dissipated in each of the components. Why? Because the current is the same throughout the circuit. The resistances will be then deciding the voltage. So for this component, the voltage would be, the volt, uh, would be V is equal to IR1. And for this component, it would be V is equal to IR2. Let's call this v1 and let's call this v2. The sum of v1 and v2 would give us the voltage from the battery. I hope this is clear up to up till this point. Now let's move forward. Right. So from this uh, equation v is equal to ir, there is something that we can very clearly understand. We can see that the voltage in a particular circuit is direct in a particular component is directly proportional to the resistance in that component. Right. So this means that in a series circuit where the current remains constant throughout the circuit, voltage will be directly dependent on uh, resistance. That means if the resistance of a particular component is high, the voltage dissipated in that component will also be high. So let's say I have a battery here. I have one resistor here which has, let's say, uh, 2000 ohms resistance. And I have an other resistor here which has a resistance of, let's say, 1500 ohms. So now, what happens is that this is a series circuit. Current 
is same throughout and voltage will be divided according to the resistances so if this is r1 this is r2 voltage in r1 is greater than voltage in r2 why because voltage is directly proportional to resistance from this formula so now what happens is in a potential now before we move forward we need to understand what is the use of a potential divider why are we exactly studying about a potential divider well the name gives us a very important clue about the uses of a potential divider see what happens is that many a times we need to divide the voltages of a uh, coming from a battery for example i have a 6 volt battery and i want to operate a component which needs only 3 volts so i need to uh, dissipate the remaining 3 volts somewhere else so that i can you provide just 3 volts to the component that i want to work with so this is one very important use so uh, so let's say i have a 6 volt battery here uh, here is my 6 volt battery now what i can do is i can have one resistor here and other resistor here and let's say both of them have equal resistances maybe 1000 ohms each so what i can now do is because the resistance in both the components is of both the components both the resistors is equal so the voltage in this component would be 3 volts and the voltage in this component would also be 3 volts now what i can do is that i can attach my uh, appliance that i want to use in parallel across this component and use it very effectively and safely here is my appliance another very daily life use of a potential divider is in the regulators of fans that you use the regulator that spinning thing uh, on the switchboards is basically a potential divider what happens is that uh, as you uh, twist that uh, dimmer what happens is that the resistance in that potential divider changes in the different components of the potential divider changes all right i'll, I'll come to that part when i tell you about what a rheostat is because that's basically an example of a rheostat which again is a potential divider so a potential divider i'll just write down the use of a potential divider a potential divider is used to provide only a specific proportion of the power from the battery to the appliance that we want to use for example regulators of fans right so in the examinations what kind of questions you will be getting you will be having a battery you will be having a resistor you will be having another resistor let's say this is a 6 vo uh, volt battery this resistor has a resistance of 1000 ohms this one has a resistance of 2000 ohms and now they'll ask you what is the voltage across this component which is V out this one would be called V in and this would be V out so they'll ask you to calculate V out well there's a formula in the books I don't remember that formula the trick that I'll be teaching you is very conceptual and very useful and I always solved, always solved my questions using that method only. So now, remember I told you a number of principles. The first thing was in a series circuit that the current remains same. So the first thing that we'll do is 
we'll find the current in this circuit. How will we find the current in this circuit? We'll again use the formula V is equal to I R. The voltage in this entire circuit, because we are talking about the uh, about the current in the entire circuit. So in this step, we will use the voltage in the entire circuit, not the individual components. So we will be using data for the entire circuit. So in the entire circuit, the voltage is 6 volts. We need to find I right now. Yes, but we do know what the resistance is. Again, we need to find the resistance of the entire circuit. We know that in series circuits, the resistances of individual components are simply added together. So the total resistance of this circuit would be 1000 plus 2000 that's equal to 3000 ohms. So the current in this circuit comes out to be 6 upon 3000 that is equal to if I divide this by 2000. So I have I is equal to 0 0.002 amperes. This is the current in the entire circuit. Now, because this is the current in the entire circuit, the current across this component would also be 0 0.002 amperes. The current across this component will also be 0 0.002 amperes. So in the second step, what you will do is that multiply the current obtained by the resistance of the uh, resistor across which V out is. So here is our resistor and across this resistor we have V out. So I will be multiplying this current by this resistance to give me my V out. So V out would be 0 0.002 times 2000 which is equal to 4 volts. Now I told you one thing in the beginning that in a series, in a parallel circuit, sorry, in a series circuit, the voltage across this component and the voltage across this component, the sum of both of them is going to give us the total voltage provided by the battery. So now that we have found out the voltage across this component, we can easily subtract the voltage from of this component from the total and get the voltage of the other component that is 2 volts. So far so good. Now what happens is that not always will you get a question where you will have two resistors. In such questions, we forcibly make two resistors. What do I mean when I say this? Let's say I have a battery here and maybe this time I have three resistors. Here we go. And let's say uh, this one has a resistance of 1000 ohms. This one has a resistance of 500 ohms. And this one, let's say, has a resistance of, um, all right, let's keep it 1500 ohms. And uh, my V out is attached across these terminals. So you can see here that we have three components, uh, three resistors here. But I told you that we'll forcibly make them two. How? Remember, this is a series circuit. And in series circuits, the resistances are simply added together. So this entire system here can be thought of as a single resistor of ha having a resistance of 2000 ohms. Now, uh, we can proceed with the working as we did in the previous question. So, if we have more than two resistors, more than two resistors in a potential divider,
we will round them off to two. To two by adding the resistances like I did here. Now let's say I had four resistors. I'll add another resistor here. This is this nice big bulky 3000 ohm resistor. Now what I'll do is that I'll make this whole thing a big resistor of 4000 ohms as well. So the point is when you have more than two resistors you will make them two. How? All the resistors across the V out part will be considered to be one resistor and all the remaining resistors will be, con will be considered one resistor. Now, let's remember one more thing. L uh, let's review some things that we have studied so far. The first thing that we studied is that a potential divider is an arrangement of series, is an arrangement of resistors in a series circuit. The, then I told you the purpose. The purpose is it provides a fixed proportion of the input voltage to a particular component. of a circuit. Then we come, came to the working principles of a potential divider. The first principle was in a CD circuit current is same throughout. We will first find the current in the entire circuit by considering the total voltage from the battery. I'm underlining this because it's important. Total voltage from the battery and total resistance of all resistors and then applying the formula V is equal to I R right after this is done We will multiply the current obtained by the resistance of the uh, resistor across which V out is. Right. This is very simple up till this point. I hope you remember this method. Now, however, the thing is that we need to know the formula as well. That I told you, you know, there's a formula in your books. The reason why you need to know this formula is because many a times in the MCQs, the examiner gives you uh, a number of formulae and he asks you to identify which the correct formula for V out is. So we'll what we'll do now is that we will derive that formula using these very principles. So let's take a battery which has an input voltage of V in. Now we have our first resistor with a resistance of R1 and a second resistor with a resistance of 
R2. And here is our V out. So what was the first step? The first step was that we'll find the total current in the battery using the total voltage provided, uh, total current in the circuit using the total voltage provided by the battery, that is V in, and total resistance of the circuit, that is the sum of the resistances. So for this circuit, uh, total resistance is R1 plus R2 and total voltage is V in. So using V is equal to IR, we have V in is equal to I times R1 plus R2. So I becomes V in upon R1 plus R2. The second step now. In the second step, what we do is that we will be multiplying the current obtained by the resistance of the resistor across which R2 is. So we will multiply, we will carry out a multiplication. Uh, v out is equal to current times R2. Now let's place this whole thing in, in the place of I because obviously I was V in upon R1 plus R2 so I can safely make the substitution here. Therefore, we now get the formula V out is equal to V in upon R1 plus R2 times R2. So this is the formula that was there in your books as well. Again, I did not remember this formula. I knew the principles and if such a question came in my paper, I would derive the formula then and there. Okay. Now there was another thing I told you uh, earlier and it's very important to remember that thing as well. That is that since in a series circuit, current remains same throughout the circuit, then according to the formula V is equal to IR, this is a constant. Therefore, V would be directly proportional to R. Therefore, an important principle is the component with greater resistance has greater voltage across it. So that means that if I reduce the uh, if I reduce the resistance of this component, what happens is V out is going to increase. Why? Because now uh, proportionately R2 will be greater than R1 and therefore from the principle that I just told you, R2 will have greater voltage across it. So <clears throat> I'll just repeat this once again. The component across which V out is if we decrease the resistance of the other components, then V out is going to increase, right? So I'll just write this down. If R1 is decreased, V out increases. And if R2 is increased, again V out increases. We can see it from this formula as well. How? V out is directly proportional to R2. So that again makes sense. Now let's come to a rheostat or a potentiometer. Now the circuit diagram for a rheostat is something like uh, this. Something like this. Or you also show it sometimes in this way. So basically what a rheostat is, that it's a variable resistor. Rheostat or variable resistor is the same thing. What happens is this, this basically consists of a coil of wire and 
there is a sliding contact on the top of it. Right? I hope you have, you might have used this in your school labs. I have. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Then we have uh, obviously a source of electric power, a battery here. The battery is connected on one end here. And on the second end, it's connected through the sliding contact to whatever component we want to use. For example, a bulb. So as this sliding contact is moved to and fro, the resistance changes. And the changes in resistance obviously are going to cause this bulb to either shine more brightly or less brightly. So what basically happens is that this potential divider, uh, this rheostat or a variable resistor is basically a potential divider. How? See, this sliding contact basically divides this entire thing into two resistors. One part is, one resistor is behind the uh, sliding contact. This will be considered as R1. And the other resistor is ahead of the sliding contact R2. So we have the conditions for a potential divider, a CD circuit and two resistors. This is exactly what happens in the regulators of fans as well. The only difference is that a rheostat that we see, it is uh, in a straight line, whereas the dimmers are exactly the same thing but in a circular arrangement. So what happens is that as you twist the dimmer, the resistance is, uh, the, uh, this distribution of R1 and R2 changes and that makes your fan spin faster or slower. Now there's, uh, I, I saw this uh, question in the past papers a few days back. I don't remember the reference at all. The question was that there is a 6 volt battery. Here's our 6 volt battery. And there was a rheostat attached here. I really don't remember the circuit diagram for a rheostat. Let's say that this is a rheostat. Now here is a point A and here is our point B. The question said, what will be the V out? The question is, what will be the V out? When the sliding contact, this is the sliding contact basically, the sliding contact is at part A, A, and at part B was B. Right. So what will happen? When I keep the sliding contact here, I told you that a rheostat basically uh, is a potential divider and the point where the sliding contact is that is the point where the resistor, uh, where the potential uh, potentiometer or the variable resistor is divided into resistors. So if let's say I keep the resist, uh, the sliding contact at this point, this will be my R1 and this will be my R2. Now, if I if I keep my sliding contact at this point, there is no R1 at all. There is just R2. So if I uh, have my V out somewhere here, if this is my V out, this was the V out given here. So obviously there would be no voltage flowing across this component. Why? Because there is because all the resistance is in this part, and the maximum and more the resistance, more the voltage. Therefore. V out at this when the sliding contact is at A would be 0 volts. However, if I now change the position of the sliding contact and I bring it here, then this is going to be my V out. And there is just one resistor here, no R2 is present. So maximum possible V out will be obtained that is 6 volts. I hope this is clear. 
And that's all in the topic of potential dividers. If you have, if you still have any questions, you can contact me on WhatsApp. Here's my number. Or you can send me an email. Or you can just comment in the comment section and I'll uh, answer your query. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.